formulate a, hype, a hypothesis which is falsifiable. Now, when I say falsifiable, don't forget, I'm not talking about that it is false, just that it may be found to be false. If I formulate a hypothesis that may not be found to be false, that according to Popper, and probably according to my PhD supervisor, or according to the editors of journals, that hypothesis is no good. That hypothesis is not well formulated. It must be, it must be, uh, must be falsifiable. There are two principal ways of making claims that are not falsifiable, and you see them all the time in this sphere here. For example, um, I don't know whether or not astrology is popular in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Astrology is very popular in Australia and many people read their stars each morning in, in, in the newspaper. Now, the claims made, the knowledge claims made are not falsifiable claims. They are think they, you, um, you will be lucky tomorrow your lucky day. Okay? So how could that be false survival? Um, you know, supposing I fall and break my neck uh, and I claim to the astrologer, you said I would have a lucky day and I fell over and I, and I hurt myself. It's not a lucky day. Well, the astrologer can al always claim, ah, but you weren't run over by a truck, <laughs> were you? You might have been run over by a truck and because it was your lucky day, <laughs> You were not run over by a truck. So you see, there's no way of falsifying what the astrologer has to say. Um, therefore, it, it exists uh, in, in this sphere here. Um, the claims of creation science are similarly not falsifiable. There are a group of Christians called... Um, uh, creationists who believe that the universe was constructed 10,000 years ago. Evidence is brought forth to attempt to falsify that claim. Evidence like fossils that are greater than 10,000 years of age. Evidence like light that has been on its journey from distant stars and distant galaxies for millions upon millions of years. The creationist response is, well, God put the fossils in the earth already aged, pre-aged. God made the light you know, um, appear most of its way here. It hasn't come all that way. God is a... Now, again, how can one falsify you know, claims in, uh, that, that are met with those sorts of uh, with those sorts of arguments. There is no conceivable piece of evidence which is um, acceptable uh, to uh, disprove the claim. So, Popper's contribution here uh, to uh, 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 in the face of the logical positivists was to critique um, their reliance on induction. And then, not, and this is, I think, the most impressive part, he went further than simply pointing out where they were wrong. He took a step further and said how things could be made good and arguing, argued that things could be made good through putting forth propositions which are falsifiable. And I think I'll, I'll, yes, I'll finish there with a quarter of an hour to go. So thank you for listening so patiently. Um, if I know it can be very boring uh, just listening to somebody go on and on, especially with such a, a strong Australian accent as mine. Um, you probably found there are a number of things that I said that were 
difficult to understand, not because your English is poor, but because my accent uh, is so strong. So, perhaps um, we can start with this. Um, we, we have 15 minutes, uh, I, I think. Uh, if people like to begin with the differences between natural philosophy and science. Perhaps with, uh, well, perhaps this question here. Are, are there are there any computer scientists? Yeah, a few, few computer scientists. This, the, the problem with induction is often difficult for people to understand. And I mean, it sounds stupid. If the sun has always risen, right? Of course it's going to rise tomorrow. Of course it is. Surely there isn't any doubt. Aren't I just nitpicking, you know, when, when I say it can't be proved as truth? Okay. But if you are familiar with, but those of you who are familiar with computer science, can, can I think see the analogy in the code you write? You know that you have written programs and that other people have written programs that have always worked. But that doesn't mean they're true, does it? Just because they have never crashed and just because they have produced correct responses, correct output, does not mean that, they, that that code is true. And at any time, any run of that code could produce either a crash or produce a false output. Now, now you know as computer scientists how that is so. Yeah? Uh, and you can see... That the, the analogy there, the doubt about the sun rising is the similar sort of a thing about the doubt that the code is going to work the next time it's run with a different data set, a different set of, a different set of inputs. So, some questions in discussion, please, um, about uh, either the difference between pre-modern science, natural philosophy and, and modern science, Modern science's reliance on empiricism and induction, and then the critique of empiricism and induction put forward by Hume and put forward by Pollock. Those have been the main topics that we've covered today. Uh, 